We're going to explain the material properties you need for each car part to perform its main function. We'll begin with the larger parts of the car, the frame, suspension, axles, and bumpers, and then hone in on the airbags, seatbelts, car seats, and tires. Enjoy! The construction of the frame that you see here laid out in black is three different forms of construction. In the front, in front of the windshield of the vehicle, you have what we call a fully boxed frame. A fully boxed frame is the most rigid frame you could possibly have. Why would you have it in the front? Because that's where your weight sits, the engine sits, that's where the torque comes in. It needs the strength to support that with a fully boxed frame. In the event of an accident, you want all the strength you can possibly have, and that's a fully boxed frame. We also know that you want a very comfortable ride. So from the windshield back, we give you what they call a row C channel. And the benefit of this is it gives you more flexibility. That flexibility is needed in order to give you a softer ride. Still gives you strength, but makes the ride comfort comfortable. So this is what's located underneath the cab of the vehicle. And then as we move to the rear of the vehicle, we have... Car frames are usually built with steel and need to have high compressive and tensile strengths to maintain their stiffness. Some parts of the frame need to have flexible and elastic capabilities, however, to endure large impacts without breaking. There are two different kinds of axles, drive axles and dead axles. A drive axle is connected to the engine and it comes in two halves with a multi-ended joint connecting the two. This is called the CV joint. The CV joint connects to the drive shaft, and when the drive shaft is turned, the motion is transferred to the drive axles. A dead axle is not connected to the engine, so it doesn't turn off its own power. Its wheels turn only when the vehicle is moving. Dead axles are primarily for load-bearing purposes to distribute the weight of the vehicle. This is why most really heavy trucks have a lot of axles. If you have a front-wheel drive or a rear-wheel drive car, you will have one drive axle and one dead axle. If your car is all-wheel drive, four-wheel drive, or all-terrain, you have two drive axles that are both connected to the engine. Because both the front and rear axles carry so much weight, they need to be made of a very strong and non-malleable substance and cannot be elastic at all. Therefore, axles are always made of metal and usually steel. A car's suspension is one of the most important parts of a vehicle. It reduces how much riders feel bumps in the road or sudden stops. The suspension system reduces the feel of bumps in the road by reducing and redirecting kinetic energy. When a car drives over a bump in the road, the wheels are shoved up then fall back down again. If a car had no suspension system, this shock would travel up through the rigid car structure and through the bodies of the passengers. Even a slight road imperfection would feel intense to the passengers of the vehicle. However, the cars we are used to riding in have highly advanced suspension systems. The most important aspect of a suspension system includes being highly elastic and having moderate compressive strength. The elasticity ensures that the tires can move independently of the car and then resume their original position. The moderate compressive strength has to do with the compression chambers of the suspension system. When they experience intense force from the tires or the car, they must be able to compress and absorb the shock, but must also resume their original shape when the force lessens. The function of a car bumper is to absorb the impact of the collision. Because of this, the bumper needs to be somewhat elastic. The bumper material needs to have a relatively low compressive strength. Ultimately, the bumper should compress more easily than other parts of the car, but it needs some resistance so it doesn't completely squish when it lightly hits an object. It takes the same impulse to get the momentum to zero if you have a car bumper or not, but having a bumper on your car increases the time that your momentum decreases to zero. More time allows the deceleration to go at a slower pace and reduces the force of the car. Similarly, airbags also increase the time that your momentum decreases to zero. Airbags are designed to stop people from hitting the dashboard and to reduce the impact of collisions at speeds of 8 to 20 miles per hour, which is the force equal to driving into a brick wall. Therefore, airbags limit the number and severity of chest and head injuries. Now cars have 2 to 10 airbags. More than 50% of car-related deaths are due to frontal impact crashes. Airbags are designed to reduce this impact. Airbags are intended for use with seatbelts. The combination of the two is what makes airbags so effective. 
The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration has reported that the combination of a properly attached seatbelt with an airbag limits the risk of a serious head injury by 75%, but just a seatbelt only reduces the risk to 38%. Airbags are made of thin nylon fabric. Seatbelts are a vital part of an automobile as they increase the chance of survival in collisions by three to four times. Seatbelts are made out of a woven webbing using at least two synthetic nylon or polyester yarns. These materials are used because they are strong, hold shape, and dry quickly. However, polyester burns easily, which is not effective in case of an explosion. Seatbelts should be flexible, durable, and have a simple design to optimize success in the case of a collision. The ideal car seat design is an easy to adjust, comfortable, upright seat that allows for many different drivers, all with individual sizes and needs to control the vehicle safely. Seats in cars can be covered by either leather or fabric. There are pros and cons to both of these materials, some being that leather is easily cleaned, lasts longer, and is water resistant. However, it comes from animals and is arguably less environmentally sound. Fabric is less expensive, but does not last as long and stains easier. Car tires are essential as they provide traction, support, and stability to a car. They must be strong and resistant to tears. There are five main layers of a car tire, the bead, body plies, steel belts, sidewall, and tread. The bead, the innermost rubber-coated layer, has a high compressive and tensile strength as its main function is to remain rigid and keep the tire in place. The body plies are usually made out of polyester cord and are also coated with rubber. This layer is fairly elastic. The steel belts have a very high shear strength and help the tire stay flat so that it makes the best contact with the road. The sidewall, like the bead, has high tensile and compressive strength and is very plastic to resist changes. The